Well, as we move along through the pandemic and we start to loosen restrictions, people are looking for something to do, something fun to do, something unique. And horse racing is one of those things I would recommend out there at the Riedel Carlton Casino. And here to tell us more about it and harness racing in general, give us a little bit of an education. I am joined by Gordon McDonald. He's the president of the National Capital Region Harness Horse Association. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Great to be here, Derek. Thank you. Um, let's talk about, uh, you know, I wanted to talk first of all about standard bread versus uh, thoroughbred because the thoroughbreds get all the attention all the time in Western movies and, you know, shows like Yellowstone. We don't hear a lot about the standard bread. What's the difference between those two? Standard bread is a uh, racehorse that goes all the way back to the late 1700s. Uh, but uh, the difference between the two primarily, if you're just looking at visuals, the thoroughbred, uh, they race on horseback with saddles, standard bread, and they tend to gallop. And the uh, uh, racehorses in the standard bread industry are in a sulky or bike. And uh, the driver, as opposed to uh, the jockey, uh, is how we refer to the person who's sitting behind them and holding the reins. And, and they, they travel a little differently in terms of their gait, and uh, we can explain a little bit of that later. But the primary difference, horseback riding versus sulky and harness-type racing. Yeah, let's talk about harness-type racing because that's specifically, you know, what we're concentrating on here today. Um, <laughs> how would you describe harness racing to people that, that have never been? It is a fantastic way to get out, have a great time for an evening of sport entertainment, and for those who want to take a game of chance uh, to another level, uh, to, to pick your favorite horse and a two or a five dollar bet on that horse, it's a, uh, it's a legalized form of entertainment in Ontario and across the country. And uh, it's a great way to get out, to have some fun entertainment and, and dine in uh, Rito Carlton's dining room uh, at the same time, or simply go out and stand by trackside and enjoy watching these fantastic, amazing animals. Yeah, it is nice to go trackside and just get that that feeling and you, you sort of feel like you're in that environment kind of the closer you get to the horses. Um, I, I, you, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier. There, there's trotting and what, what's, what is the other, pacing? So there's trotters and pacers. What's the difference between those two? The difference basically is the way their legs travel. And if you look at a pacer very closely in one of those photos, you'll see a little piece of harness down around their knees and it connects a loop on the front legs to a loop on the back legs and that's called a hobble there's one on each side of the horse and it basically uh, helps the horse travel in what's called a pacing gait which is two left legs and two right legs forward and back in unison whereas a trotter quite the opposite left front and right rear legs go back and forth and right front and rear left legs go back and forth. Now that's the more traditional historical gait of a horse. But over the years, uh, uh, those who have raced horses found that uh, a pace is a faster gait than a trot. Um, and, uh, and over the years, you see more pacers uh, going faster speeds as a result. Gordon, I referenced uh, movies and television a little bit earlier on there in, in my introduction. And I, I wanted to get back to that because I think when people think, you know, host, horse ownership and training and riding and they, you know, they assume it's, you know, this rich family and you have to be rich to, to own a horse and to get involved in, in this sport. Is that the case? Not at all. Not at all. Oh, uh, thoroughbred racing historically has been a, a sport for the wealthy. Uh, standard grid racing is a sport for uh, the, the common person, the common family, those uh, who want to get involved in a sport. Um, it, it's affordable, uh, if you, especially if you get involved in a group of people owning one horse, which uh, is you, you find in a lot of cases in the horses that race out around Rita Carlton and other tracks across Ontario. Uh, again, it's a great form of family entertainment, and these animals are truly majestic. You know, myself, uh, my brothers, my nephew, um, nephews, or we're, we're all involved in the sport. Uh, it's a great way to uh, keep your family uh, focused on a sport, uh, entertain, get in the outdoors, and uh, and enjoy uh, the energy, the natural energy that really comes from interacting with these animals. Uh, well, they're, they're truly majestic. Well, what's the age range of these horses in harness racing? They generally start in training as yearlings where they get uh, broken into the idea of what a harness is and, and, and what a race is and how they get taught how to race. They usually race their first races as two-year-olds and then uh, they, they, they get a bit of a break after a few races, come back as three-year-olds. And from the time they're three-year-old 
until the time they're 14 years old, they're eligible to race as full-fledged racing horses. I, uh, I have a number of them myself that uh, range in age anywhere from three years old up to eight years old. Um, again, a whole lot of fun. They're in the prime of their life when they're five and six and seven, uh, but they, they do race until they're 14. Uh, that's the age range limit in the industry. Right. I just love your enthusiasm, Gordon. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Derek. All right, take care. Again, a reminder, horse racing every Sunday at the Rideau Carlton Casino. It's a great time for friends and family to get together. Uh, and, you know, you can get up close and personal with some of those horses as well. Don't go away. More daytime coming up right after this.